Alrighty, welcome to another four on four. I've been on a bit of a losing streak lately, but the comeback starts now. We've got myself, Updraft Elemental, Talisker, and Nachito. Me and Nachito, we're gonna win this one. Last couple, maybe we didn't. We're battling against Dan, the sandiest of dogs, Max Smith, and Theo, some classic villains of the story. Also, all good friends of mine, because, you know, I draft with all these guys all the time, but they'll be villains for now. And I'm not anywhere close to Sandy. Max passing to me, I'm passing to Theo. I say that because there's a seasoned engineer, but that's also just the pick. Misty's the second best card in the pack. Theo's going to take the Misty. Unless he picked one, Reanimator and Tomb might take Bitter Triumph. Maybe Watery Grave, though. That seems a little less likely. I think uh, I think Dungeoneer and then probably not going to lap Evangelist, but this is actually a pretty deep pack. So let's just take Dungeoneer and see where we're at. Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, there's a Jace. I'm not going to take that, I don't think. Really do like Scholar of New Horizons. I actually would consider that one. There's a big Teferi, but I think that's worse than Jace. They're both blue planeswalkers, but Jace is cheaper. And I think actually, not necessarily better, but just I think a little more powerful overall. This pack's pretty bad. There's a Gaia's Cradle. I, I might honestly take Gaia's Cradle. I actually love Guy's Cradle in mono-white decks. Not that I'm mono-white, but in white-based aggressive decks. And I think it's just a really powerful card. I, I like Scholar, but it's too early to pick the card here. And I just don't think Jace goes with Dungeoneer all that well, whereas Cradle Dungeoneer is a really nice start. Yeah, I'm going to take Cradle. I think that that's, that's a reasonable line to take. Okay, and now there's a Time Spiral. And a Sentinel, but there's also a Giver of Runes, and I think I'm just going to take Giver of Runes. It's great with Cradle, what cheap creatures generally are. It's actually really good with Dungeoneer as a way to protect it. And I think Sentinel, I could maybe get that caliber of card later. Plus, as much as I like Time Spiral, I just don't have the start for it. I want Misty Jace, yeah, sure, I'd take Time Spiral, but I'll take Giver of Runes here. Also, Mac is much more likely to put me on some kind of blue deck, though. Here now there's <laughs> Echo Vians and Snapcasters, two of the better cards. There's also a Rafine's Tower, a Jite. Probably just going to take the Jite here. It's not my favorite card in the world, but I actually think it's decent. And Cradle gives me a lot of excess mana if I can get that to work. Plus, none of the other cards really go that well with what I've got. Nice. Now I can pick up Esper Sentinel, just passing every blue card. But every, every pack has two of them, which isn't the absolute worst. And... Esper Sentinel is also great with the, the kind of strategy I'm going with. I don't feel committed to green at all because of this cradle. It's just a big colorless land in a deck with a ton of creatures. Though, of course, the fact that it taps for green means that I have slight inroads into casting green cards. But I kind of like where I'm at now. I think Mac is pr trying to hook me, or at least is aware that he's passing Time Spiral, Force of Negation, you know, those kinds of cards because normally I'm on uh, I'm in the market for those, but I opened a really powerful white card, which can send me in a slightly different direction. So I kind of like this start. Oh, I really like Get Lost in this kind of deck. I've been really impressed with the card. It just kills so much stuff. And passing a Mystical Tutor to go with all those other cards. A Hymn to Turok, if you're into that. There's also a Revoker, and I think Revoker is good, but I, I'm, I've been really impressed with Get Lost. Wow, in a Lion's Eye. What you doing to me here? Um... Monastery Mentor is kind of interesting with Cradle. It could also Mishra's Bobble because it's just generally a good card. It could also Gemstone Mine. It's actually pretty good in aggressive decks. It basically just gives you three shots of mana. I, I don't love Mentor. It is good with Cradle because you play Mentor. I'm just going to take Mishra's Bobble. I think Mishra's Bobble is awesome. And then, oh, Steel Seraph. Steel Seraph is very good too. There's an Arcane Denial, a Prismatic Ending. Let's just pick eight. Yeah, let's do that. Just looking to to go mono white here, unless I have a strong reason to go a different direction. With, I think, a pretty good start for it. A bunch of cheap creatures uh, get lost. Wow, Mox Opal came back. Sort of watery grave. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not that far from Mox Opal with Esper Sentinel, Steel Seraph, Mishra's Bobble, Jite. Let's just take it. It's also just a really good card. Maybe we could be white artifacts. That is actually a somewhat supported deck. And uh, I think it's actually reasonable to hate the Mox Opal. Also, I passed Theo, Lion's Eye Diamond, and Time Spiral, and that kind of card. Okay, Scholar came back, which I'm going to take here. 
over a bunch of cards that I don't care about. And that's a good sign, because that was the only good white card in the pack previously, which means it doesn't mean no one else is playing white, but it means that uh, everyone who was playing white chose not to take it. Oh, Chromatic Star for my artifact deck? Okay. This is going to go in a different direction than I normally do, but could we be an Academy White Weenie deck? We need a Retrofitter of Foundry in Academy. There's a there's a Candelabra that might come back. I will take March, or I could take the Seiju, but I actually like March reasonably well. So currently we're in one, two, three, four, five, six artifacts already in pack one. Huh. I, I can't say I mind that. Uh, I'll just take Philogy Archaeologist. Oh, I'll take Karn. Karn's actually a card I would play. Oh, late Shatter Skull Smashing. Let's see. Uh, let's see how pack two goes. This is interesting. So I have outs to be just straight up mono white normally, but I also have a pretty solid artifact start with Karn and six artifacts, including a lot of cheap ones. Hmm. I was really hoping to open Talarian Academy, but instead I opened no playables. <laughs> I mean, really? Oh, this is so such a tragedy. I have to first pick a Necromancy that I'm not going to play. I, the problem is, oh, wait, no, no, no. There's an Exhum too. Hold on. If there was an Exhum, I would just take Necromancy because I think Mac has a pretty decent shot of playing black here. The problem is, what what card would I possibly want to put in my deck? I guess Sir Ginger? Ranger Captain of Eos? Yeah, Ranger Captain's the best card for me, but there's also an Elspeth here. I guess I could, like, Ranger Captain Wheel Haywire Might's pretty strong. I'd be passing Necromancy and Exhum. All right, I'll just do that. I'll just do that. That's fine. Oh, I do like me a Luris. How, how Luris-y am I? This would not be a companion Luris deck, which does take away quite a bit of the strength. There's also Grief. I mean, there's Noble Hierarch, which isn't crazy, but I don't really want to play green. There's also Student of Warfare, but I think I'll just take Luris. I have Mishra's Bobble, I have Chromatic Star, I have Cheap Creatures. Luris is a really strong card, too, so I'm not passing a really strong card. Well, Mac passed me a last pick Shatter Skull Smashing, so I feel a little more comfortable passing a Fury than I normally would. I might Sarah Paragon here. I think that's also a pretty decent card. Every good card in this pack is not my colors, which I don't like. That was a Ragavan. I'm just going to ship both, both to Mac. I'm going to take Thalia, I think. I, I do have a lot of spells, but these are kind of cheaper spells, and Thalia is really strong. Plus, Gaia's Cradle can help me pay for, for Thalia if I if I need to. Like, it's not like I need... And I also don't need to play Bobble or Mox Opal. Like, these packs have not lent themselves to... Well, I'm going to play Bobble no matter what, so that, that's the wrong thing to think. Mox Opal is the one card here. Karn. Yeah, those two cards are not looking... Like, they're going to be quite well-supported enough. But we'll have to see how the rest of these packs go. Mm, now there's a Path. I do like Mia Samwise. I don't like passing this from the Catacombs, but Path is too good to pass up. I think I've got to slam that. And I really don't want to play a second color because I'm so far behind on taking uh, any lands that would support that. Would I play Thran Spider? It's 3 mana, 2, 4 reach. We both get a power stone, and you pay 7 to look at the top 4, put an artifact in your hand. I probably just want Brave the Elements. I think Brave the Elements is pretty strong. So the white from this direction, well, I mean, I got a 5th pick Path, 4th pick Thalia. Yeah, that's not too bad. I was going to say the white cards from this direction haven't been quite as good, but it's been okay. I haven't seen much blue. I think Theo's almost assuredly in blue. And maybe blue artifacts, even, uh, depend, depending on what happened in pack one. But I like where I'm at. Oh, Blade Splicer fits kind of all the, checks all the boxes. It's good with Cradle. It's good with Mox Opal. And it's just a good white card, so I'll do that. And then there's a Batter Skull here and a Horizon Canopy or Silent Clearing. I guess Horizon Canopy is a little better because the Cradle produces green. Though Silent Clearing can help cast Luris. <laughs> I think I'm going to take the Batter Skull. If I get a Stoneforge, Batter Skull's nice. Oh, Haywire Might didn't wheel. Funny. I'll just take Sir Ginger. This, this looks solid. I think that uh, I can do that. And now, I don't really care about playing Wrath. I think I'm just going to hate a Goryeo's Vengeance from Mac. I don't think I'm that likely to want Scrubland either. 
At least I don't really feel the loss of not taking it. All right, this pack was just okay. I'm gonna need something pretty nice in pack three or this deck's gonna be a little bit on the mediocre side. And here, I guess I've gotta take Gemstone Caverns. I don't really like passing this Volcanic, especially if Mac did take Fury and Raghavan. But I mean, a last pick Shatter Skull Smashing, like that is a really good card. There's also a Talisman, but I'm not that committed to the artifact bit. Let's just take Gemstone Caverns. It's a good card. Let's see what my hit rate is on siding this out when I'm on the play or in when I'm on the draw, depending on the deck. I'm going to play it in the main deck because a colorless land isn't going to hurt me. So it's it's just that when I'm on the play, I've got to side it out. But we'll see. If it's anything like my last couple decks, I, I won't be on the play after a game one anyway. Uh, Dark Confidence probably better than Sinkhole. And I don't care about Renegade Rallyer. Let's see. How many artifacts do I have? One, two, three, counting blade splicer, four, counting Karn, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, that's a lot, even if three of them are like on the more, three or four of them are on the three or more mana cost plan. I'll take a Lingering Souls. It's good with Cradle. I guess this is where taking like a Scrubland or something would have helped. And I guess I'll just hate the Bazaar. Max way more likely to put Bazaar in his deck than Primeval Titan, I would say. And let's get my last card here. <laughs> last pick, Oath of Druids. All right, let's go. Action. No, I'm going to take Flicker Wisp. Theo passed me a bunch of black cards. I, I don't like passing Devonic Tutor, but I'm just not going to play it. There's 0% chance, not zero, but very like, low likelihood I'd play it. Flicker Wisp will be good for me. I'm also passing a Breach and a Prismatic Vista. Let's just do that. Next pick is somehow worse. Uh... At this point, I'm going to take the Opal and the Karn out. I think Chromatic Star might be okay with Luris, and it's actually a little mini combo Sir Ginger, but we'll see. I guess I could take Armageddon here or Lion Sash. Neither really excites me. Lion Sash is probably a little bit better. Wow, the second pick I dream of, the Lion Sash. And then this pack has no white cards again. There's a Portable Hole, which I guess I'll take. Uh, passing a Channel. And an Inquisition and a Zagoth Triumph. Maybe a World Spine if Theo's doing that. All right. Let's see. What are we kind of hoping for at this point? I don't know. Good white cards like a Solitude or a Parallax Wave. Palace Jailer. It's just that, that sort of thing. I suppose those would all be pretty decent. And maybe, maybe I don't want to play this Chromatic Star. We'll have to see. I don't really have a use for other colors of mana. It would just be to recur with Luris, and that's kind of weak. And it's kind of an anti-combo with Thalia. Though I guess it lets me flashback Lingering Souls if I go down that road, but I don't think I'm that likely to. All right, there's a Wandering Emperor here, which I guess I'll take. There's both Lord and Reveal and Remand are strong blue cards, so I guess at least I'm passing two, and I can't play Leyland Binding, so sure. Wandering Emperor. Hurrah. All right, here we're passing Channel and Emrakul, but I don't know how likely it is that Theo's playing green. And I'm going to take Spellbook Vendor. This card, I think, is actually solid. When you, you can pay one, make a Sorcerer roll. Whenever, on the beginning of combat, you get to attack and do some good stuff. I can't really once upon a time, but I can Palantir. Did Max switch into white or something? Maybe? I don't know. Or were these packs just really bad for me? I guess Sandy's three seats away. That's not... I mean, pack one, the white was reasonably there. I mean, I guess I have enough playables, but <laughs> I'm not really that excited about this deck. Uh, well, Wasteland's at least good. None of these other cards do much for me. Passing another another Eldrazi to go with this channel. I think Theo's a blue gamer after passing all that blue in pack one. And he passed black and red back, so he definitely could take channel in both Eldrazi, but uh, if he does, so be it, I suppose. Well, White Weenie with no power and none of the like the top five white cards is really exactly where you want to be. This is I got I got him right where I want him. <laughs> no parallax wave, no palace deal. Oh no, I do have a seasoned engineer. That card's all is near the top of the list. No swords to plowshares, no solitude. You know, those are those are the real big hits. But Season Dungeon probably rounds out the top five or so. I, I I guess Reprieve's pretty good too. Not that into Sunfall in this deck. Metamorph could actually be decent. I have like Flicker Wisp, Blade Splicer, Copying Steel Seraph. Oh, Copying Dungeoneer is kind of nice. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll Metamorph. 
I'm not playing any of these other cards. I think I'll just take a Soul Cauldron as a sideboard card. I don't think I got there on Karn or Mox Opal, sadly. Like, I could I could try and play, let's see. But then I'd have to cut slightly better cards. And, I mean, I have one, two, three, four. I don't, I don't really want to start Batter Skull. Five, six, seven, eight artifacts. Okay, Geddon Wheel. That, that at least is nice. So... I actually feel white was quite open based on the cards that I've seen wheeling. They just, a lot of these cards appear to not have been opened. I need to cut a couple cards here. Uh, probably something in this range. Maybe I cut Sarah Paragon. No, I do have Wasteland. I like that combo. Mm. I'm going to hate the World Spine Worm if Theo's on like some sort of channel deck, maybe. I don't know. Channel Natural Order type stuff. I'm scared of this Inquisition. The reason being... If Max passing a really late Inquisition, he's less likely to be playing black, which means he's more likely to be playing red, which is really bad for me. I think Probe is better than Blood Crypt. I don't really want to play Probe in my Thalia deck, but I think it is better than Blood Crypt. Because I passed Mac Ragavan and Fury, and I think it was okay to do so at the time, but I don't I don't feel good about it. I'm not too worried about passing Mastermind. It's it's a fine card. Theo's probably going to play. It's probably going to be decent. But Basalt Monolith really makes some decks pop. So I guess I'm take a Vol Sleeper. All right. Well, let's see how this one does. I'm I'm not not optimistic, but you know, at any given Sunday or you know, in this case, whatever day of the week it ends up being. <laughs> I don't even own a copy of uh, Brave the Elements or Spellbook Vendor. I guess I haven't drafted those. Oh, uh, so. I'm going to play all planes here, of course. 10, 14 planes, 17 lands. This is 42 cards. I guess I'll put a couple swamps in the sideboard in case I want to play like Lingering Souls plus a couple of these other things, which really I don't see happening, but I suppose you never know. And I don't even know why I'd want another planes, but sure. Anyways, um, I guess I could take out Sir Ginger. Because I don't have really an artifact theme anymore. It is cute with Mishra's Bobble. This costs three. I, I don't want to take an Armageddon. Armageddon is the kind of card that can actually win games. And throw a big curveball in. I kind of feel like I should take out maybe Ranger Captain. It gets Esper Sentinel or Giver. Those are both pretty good. I could also take out Palantir of Orthanc. Though I, I think that's probably decent too. I could also sideboard the Brave the Elements. Maybe that's better. I've got Path, Portable Hole, Get Lost. I have a decent amount of removal. Yeah, let's let's sideboard Brave the Elements and then probably just run it like this. See how it goes. All right, let's take a look at what my teammates got. Talisker's got the classic Talisker. Leland Binding's an auto include in all Talisker's decks. This is a Tinker for Triplicate Titan deck with... Palace Jailer, Fracture Identity, Subtlety, Mind Twist, Swords to Plowshares. Those are some of the good white cards, which, to be fair, I get sniped by everyone. Those cards are great. Uh, Feywild Caretaker, Mystic Confluence, <laughs> Fallen Shinobi of Malcolm. Ooh, Thran Spider, scuttering in for a Fallen Shinobi. All right, and a bunch of Triomes and Fetches and stuff. Yeah, yeah, sounds good, Talisker. Do your thing. Uh, Nachito's on a Black Lotus deck with Urza Saga, Mana Vault, Grim into Upheaval. Prismatic Ending, Green Sun Zenith. Yeah, this deck looks nice too. Good mana as well. And then Updraft has like one of the better Rakdos decks I've ever seen. It has a Mox, has a Dark Ritual, Thoughtseize, Reanimate, Imperial Seal, Bolt, great one drops. No Entomb is the only thing. But then Animate, Life Death with Exhume, Recurring Nightmare, Inti, oh wow, him. Itali, Carnosaur from the Catacombs, and then Through the Breach for the Itali, the Ulamog, the Woodfall Primus, where Shallow Grave also works with Ulamog. Recurring Nightmare is great with Woodfall Primus. There's a Grief 2 and a Fire Covenant and a Pyromancer and a Blood Tithe. Perfect. We ended up cutting six cards from this. Um, it was something like Decadent Dragon, Glint Sleeve Siphoner, Gruff Triplets, Exhum, something along those lines. But uh, yeah. Well, my teammates' decks look pretty good. You know, Talisker is always a, a, a wild card, but Nachito and Updraft look like they're good for a couple wins, so maybe I can get one, maybe I can get two. We'll see. Maybe I get three. You never know. All right, time for round one against the dog, who's probably playing red-white. Ooh, this is actually a nice little hand. Turn one, Esper Sentinel. 
turn two, maybe portable hole, or if I draw a two drop, and then if, assuming I hit a land by turn three, Luris replay bobble is just an awesome turn three play, or perhaps a steel serif, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see what the board looks like by then. But I like this hand, and especially being on the play and having Esper Sentinel and portable hole goes a long way, because one of the weaknesses of this deck is that when I'm on the draw, I feel like there's not that many ways I have to kind of get ahead tempo-wise. You need like power, swords to plowshares, that that kind of thing really helps for that. And uh, being on the play and having two one drops kind of makes me not worry about that so much. So I like where we're at. We're going to see what Sandy's got to offer. Oh, one disaster though. <laughs> uh, Mac is playing red, we were pretty sure. Apparently my teammate passed him for Theolingus in pack one. I don't know why he passed a last pick Shatter Skull Smashing. I'm sure there was some reason. But passing Ragovan and Fury to him was not great. Beaumont Courier. All right, I see where we're at. Well, at least I have a portable hole target. Sandy is definitely playing red. Is he playing white? Who knows? Okay. Here comes Le Bomarino. He's going to get in there, I would assume. How do you not? All right, draw, draw. So if I draw a two drop, that would be nice. But a third land would also be pretty good. So we will see. The funny thing is this could have been a Mox Opal hand. Oh, an Umazawa's Jite. Um, yeah, let's just do that. Because now I threaten to equip Esper Sentinel with Jite. If Sandy has a burn spell, he has to pay the tax on Esper Sentinel. And if he plays a two drop to like try to block the Esper Sentinel, I might be able to portable hold the two drop, equip GTA and attack. We'll see what his answer is, but I don't hate this. If he has a one mana removal spell, oh, he is playing white as well. Oh, yep, red, white. If he has a one mana removal spell, that's one thing, but because then he could kill the Esper Sentinel and pay for it. But Talisker has the swords to plowshares, so I'm hoping Sandy just taps out for a two drop. No, he did not. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for it. It's fine. This might might get a card out of him thanks to the Esper Sentinel trigger one way or another. All right. I will attack. Like if he has Bone Crusher Giant or something, I at least get to draw a card. If he has, and he can't have Lightning Bolt. There's actually not that many things he could have though. If he attacked with Beaumont, he probably has something. There, there's a, there are things he could have, but a lot of them give me a card. Like, this is going to give me a card. Unless this is like, oh, this is Samwise to trade. Yeah, that is fine with me. I'm not even going to necessarily need to use Portable Hole here. Well, Samwise being uh, an instant did get around the Portable Hole nicely. It made it so my mana usage this turn was not very efficient. But I don't mind it too much. Because it means he didn't have a way to stop me from getting a GTA active, and if I draw, I'm just gonna kill that now. If I draw a land, then I can go Luris replay Sentinel. If I don't, I can go Luris replay Bobble, or I can go Portable Hole followed by Thalia. Let's see what this is, Council's Judgment? Oh, Brea's Apprentice, all right. Yeah, that's fine. Draw, land is actually pretty nice, because I think I wanna go Luris Esper Sentinel here. With a GTA in play, just getting the most creatures into play, is the ideal scenario. And then I, I'm i gonna go, I think just kill the Thopter now because he can sack it to Brea's Apprentice and I, I don't mind losing the counter here. Also, there's a decent chance I wanna go Steel Seraph plus Equip Jite. So that would be nice. And he's probably gotta try to kill this Luris if he can. All right, so he has the Mox, but it's not actually speeding him up this turn because Esper Sentinel's eating the mana the mana gains from it, which is fine to me. Oh, is he not going to pay? I, I love that, if that's the case. Um, let's see. Okay, he didn't pay. Ooh, I drew Metamorph? That doesn't, doesn't sound too bad. So he's got a four drop. Oh, tap land into a four drop, presumably. Well, one way or another, he needs the mana. You're not going to let me draw a card for out of the kindness of his heart. Me, me and the Sandy Dog are buddies, but, you know, that, that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> Let's see what the, the card is he plays. 
This portable hole is getting a little worse, but you know, if I don't see a target for it this turn, I'm going to probably snap it off on the Mox. Also, he's playing in Dotha Triumph, so he has either black or green cards in his deck. Chandra, Torch of Defiance, kill my Lurus. All right. I get to go Steel Seraph, kill Chandra, and if I draw a land, that would have been sick. Um, does Dungeoneer change that? No. Cast this with Prototype. A land would have been really good, but... So it goes, and I will Portable Hole the Mox here, especially since Bray's Apprentice can sack it. Oh, he didn't sack the Mox. <laughs> Flying. Attack Chandra. All right. So I got to kill Chandra here. I still have a pretty, pretty great position. Sandy's on three cards. Also, killing the Mox with Esper Sentinel in play, I think, is nice because it just increases the odds that I get to draw a card off Esper Sentinel. I'm not blocking that Braze Apprentice. <laughs> you, you can get in there. No plays. Interesting. Um, equip to equip GTA or not, I kind of don't want to. All right. I don't think Sandy has too much, but I'm going to give this Vigilance. Because it plays around... Oh, I guess I have the Wandering Emperor. But the reason I want to give the Steel Seraph Vigilance is I want to play Seasoned Dungeoneer this turn. And I would rather have this back to block the Brea's Apprentice if that becomes an issue. So let's do Vigilance. I'm just going to attack. And not attack with Esper Sentinel either. I would assume Sandy has something here. I don't know. What? That could be, though. Uh, okay, this costs a lot of mana. Solitude. I'm glad I didn't equip. <laughs> or attack with Esper Sentinel. Wow. Just great plays all around. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's Dungeoneer. Especially since I have a Metamorph. Copying Season Dungeoneer is pretty nice. So what can Sandy do? He could attack with both. If he has a way to kill the Dungeoneer, then I could be in trouble. Oh, Robber of the Rich. That's not bad. What's this? Char my Dungeoneer. Oh, Gut. Okay. We whoa, we got a game here. But, eh, I mean, kind of. Umazawa's Jite on Seasoned Dungeoneer is just going to dominate this completely. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get to steal the initiative here. Oh, he gets to sack the Robber and then exile my Wasteland. Sure. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll get a 15. You get the initiative. And then on my turn, I equip GT on Seasoned Engineer, attack, and I can kill can kill whatever it is I want. Mm. And it gets planes. Sure. Still haven't figured out what's up with this Indotha Trium. All right, so I equip Dungeoneer. Drawing a land was actually pretty good. I'm not going to play Spellbook Vendor. I'm just going to attack with this. I'm going to explore, draw another land. And let's go forge on the seasoned engineer. I could kill the gut, but I don't really need to. I can just kill the skeletons if if that becomes an issue. And then I'm going to play Thalia and play Spellbook Vendor. Because Thalia also just bricks any sort of Skeleton attack. I can just double block with Thalia and first strike kind of gets the job done. And I have Metamorph to copy Dungeoneer. Not that I'm going to need it. This game, I think, is extremely over. Yeah, sure. You want to make another skeleton? Go for it. Also, Umazawa's GT picks off the skeleton tokens pretty nicely. I don't know what the deal is with this gut card. It doesn't seem that good to me. It is very good. I, in this particular game, it doesn't do much. But yes, it, that card is great. I've lost a lot to it, and I've won with it as well. Okay. What do you got here? They're all coming in, huh? Sure. I mean, Thalia can just block Solitude at the very least. Yeah, that, that attack doesn't look that good. Next turn. Yeah, there is no next turn. All right, we got a game. Woohoo! Let's go. Brave the Elements looks kind of good in this sort of matchup. I like Lion Sash. Or sorry, not Lion Sash. Get Lost. I don't know if I like Lion Sash. Agatha's Soul Cauldron. It's got like Brea's Apprentice. 
Doesn't sound like fantastic. Sir Ginger could be good against Chandra. What am I cutting? I don't, oh, I'm definitely cutting Armageddon. That, that one can go. I mean, I like Lingering Souls a lot. Oh, I'm on the draw. Gemstone Cavern stays in, hooray. I'll definitely keep the Wasteland in too, of course. Do I want to cut something for, like, I could put in like Lingering Souls and Chromatic Star. I could put in Batter Skull. Lion Sash doesn't look fantastic. It's just kind of mopey. The thing is, if I put in Lingering Souls, I also kind of want to put in Star. Maybe I just put in Batter Skull. That card, that card can do, do some work. All right, time for game two against the Sandiest of Dogs. All right, we're on the draw of this game. Let's see what sort of opening hand we've got to play with. Uh, yeah, this is fine. I'm not going to mulligan this. I don't really like casting either of these removal spells too early. So, And same with Metamorph, but it's pretty hard to mull a turn one giver. Any, any other creature I draw could be pretty nice. And, you know, if I need to kill things, these do, do get rid of them. So... I'm not loving this draw, but I think it's reasonable. Dragon's Rage Channeler, yeah, sure. Let's find uh, another play, shall we? Be totally fine with Thalia. I'd, I would lock in a seasoned engineer, even. Spellbook vendor, any any of any basically any of my decent creatures are are kind of what I'm looking for here. I can block the Dragon's Rage Channeler, so it doesn't even get that. Though he might just be killing my giver of runes right now. I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Yeah, burst lightning. Probably gonna mill a land. <laughs> mill a seed of the synod and artifact land. Actually, that is that is in the cube. Seed of the synod is the only artifact land in the cube because it is good for the blue deck. So on the one hand, I don't like that he kept the card on top, but on the other hand, it does make it so this thing gets delirium a little slower. Oh funny. He kept it on top as gonna get to put it under the bow mat. Okay. All right, action. Nope. Let's just pass. I don't think casting either of my removal spells on those things right now is going to be very good. If he plays something, I guess I can metamorph it. I don't see what the circumstances would be that I would that would lead me to casting one of these spells this turn. It is, of course, possible. Broadside bombardiers, that sort of thing, could do it. Felden Ronom Excavator. Okay. <laughs> He's playing a bunch of creatures that are too bad to use removal or copy. <laughs> uh, I guess I kind of have to. Let's blow up Felden. And then I can pass if he puts too many map tokens on the same thing. All right, I go to 16, and now he gets to map token a Dragon's Rage Channeler, I'm sure. But... Kind of have to use my mana. Bray's Apprentice. Oh, that throws an artifact into the graveyard for Dragon's Rage Channeler. Though if he keeps it on top, I don't mind it because th then I can metamorph it. That that's actually decent. All right, he did mill it. Oh, March. Yeah, I like March on Beaumont Courier now. There's two counters under it, and he's got or two cards under it. And he only has two cards in hand, so. If he goes, like, land, play a, a creature, and then I kill the Beaumont, he might be able to sack it to draw two, discard just one. And I'm probably going to cast another kind of bad removal spell on this Dragon's Rage at some point. I didn't think I wanted to do it right then, but it'll depend. If Sandy goes in on, like, making it delirious, that's one thing. But it's right now it's just a 2-2. Two -two. I have creatures and instants in my graveyard, so if I metamorph it, that's not that. Impressive either. All right. Oh, that was awesome. Ranger Captain of Eos. That's a gassy draw. Let's see. All right. Ranger Capitan. Get my last one drop, which is Esper Sentinel, but I'm happy with that. I wish I had one more one drop so I could metamorph the Ranger Captain, but sadly that is not on the cards. But Sandy did have basically take a turn off here. Oh, I guess he's using the man anyway. Oh, Samwise, just running it out there. Okay. Hmm. He can make it, so... I don't know which one he's going to make the ring bearer, because if he makes Samwise the ring bearer, he could attack past the ranger captain, but then Esper Sentinel blocks. So I guess, yeah, he's just going to make the, the channeler a ring bearer. 
And he's slamming something. Elspeth Knight Errant. That I don't like. I get to draw a card at least. All right. I would like him to not flip, not fully charge up the Dragon's Rage Channeler. Hopefully he just hit a creature. Creature, instant, or artifact are the three types he has. So land, he just slams. So it can't be a land on top. He's bending the solitude. Wow. Okay. So now he can plus three, plus three the Samwise. But if he does that, then I get to attack the Elspeth back. All right. I mean, I guess I take seven here. Yeah, I'm not chumping to save two damage. Oh, that was awesome. So let's go... Sadly, I still have to prototype it, but by doing this, I now get to give my Ranger Captain lifelink. I don't have a way to kill the Elspeth yet, but I can hit Elspeth down to, to 1, and I go up to 10, and then now I have Path up 2, and next turn I have the ability to play a Metamorph and make another Steel Seraph. So that, that's pretty good. He bin the Solitude. It, that might mean he's got a good 5-mana spell in hand, because you wouldn't keep a second 5-mana spell on top, especially if he doesn't have a white card in hand. So we'll, we'll see. All right. Those two getting in. All right, I mean, I can't block either. Well, I could block the Samwise, I guess, but I'm going to path it. Don't really want to go to two. Sandy does get to the, the fifth land that maybe he's looking for. Maybe his swamp or forest. I don't know what that Endotha Triumph's doing. Yeah, forest. It's got pest infestation or something. I don't know. This, this is the ring bearer, which is why I can't block it. I just didn't want to go to two and get burned out, or go to three rather and get burned out. Figure of destiny, sure. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with all that. And revoker, sure. I feel like I'm now winning. I'm worried that Sandy's last card is maybe the green card. He's probably going to name Ranger Captain now because it has an ability that's on the board. He might name Uwe as I was GTA. I don't really have a strong reason to think Sandy has specifically pest infestation. Oh, he did. He named he named Knight Captain of Eos. <laughs> this is a Ranger Captain of Eos. You got to get your ranks right. I'm not going to use it, though. I'm going to tell Sandy that's the case. Yeah, I, I told Sandy I'm not going to use it. Uh, all right. Straw. Uh, okay. I mean, I guess I'll lose to, uh, lose to pest infestation. My body is already metamorph. Sadly, not the big version. Oh, target you and target you. And so let's see. Steel Seraph is getting lifelink. Ranger Captain. Um, I think it's also getting lifelink. And then this is going to attack Elspeth, and this is going to attack Sandy. And if he wants to double block, he could. On the Ranger Captain, he's obviously not going to do that. And I get to take out Elspeth and gain 6 life, so I'm at 12 now. And he's going to pump Figure of Destiny. And if it's Pest Infestation time, it's Pest Infestation time. Could also be Undermountain Adventure. Just trying to think of what green cards he'd be splashing. He doesn't even necessarily have one in hand. But again, I'm looking at the... I didn't keep Solitude on top play. And that is a little different. Okay, this now... Now we're on... We're Tron on Dragon's Rage. I think I just take eight here. I could also double block Figure of Destiny. Yeah, that is actually probably good. Because... He, can, he has to uses the mana for the turn. It's pretty hard for him to pump it and have a removal unless he can just kill the Steel Seraph, but that, that's also somewhat difficult to do. And then next turn I get to attack for six and gain three, which I think is better, especially since this figure is also not the furthest away from just getting to the, la the highest level. Okay, Robber of the Rich. All right. Action. Oh, that was action, all right. That was action. 
Mm, what are we doing here? I guess I'm putting it on Ranger Captain because that card's weaker. And let's give I'm at eight. Ranger Captain Vigilance or Lifelink. I guess just Lifelink. And then attacking. Maybe Vigilance was better, actually. I don't know. Okay. Well, maybe I should have put it on the Steel Seraph and done Vigilance is what kind of what I'm saying. But this, this works out all right. And then Quip. I'm not going to die to the Dragon's Rage Channeler, so... But I guess... Oh, I guess I could block it and then pump to get around the ring bear. Yeah, I guess I should have given the Steel Seraph Vigilance because I would have, instead of gaining three, I would be at eight, but then I could block that thing and maybe ambush it. Also, if he doesn't have an answer to this, it kind of doesn't matter. Okay. Asika's Chariot. Oh, that answers the question. Okay, that's good to know because I think I'm just going to win now. Make two idiots, pass the turn. And here I'm definitely giving Vigilance. And then I'm attacking, and I'm not pumping here. I'm just going to hit for three. And if he's got an answer to the Steel Seraph, then that's pretty bad for me. But if he doesn't, then I feel like I'm in great shape here. I guess he can use the Dragon's Rage Channeler to crew the Chariot to prevent it from attacking. But... If he doesn't have an answer to either of GTA or Steel Seraph, then next turn I get to attack for 11 if I want to. So, and if he doesn't crew the chariot with the channeler before attacking, then I get to ambush that as well. All right, Sandy did do that. I mean, he can attack with these. No, it actually doesn't really accomplish much because I can block pump once and then I, I, I net plus one GTA counter. I guess I take four down to three, but I still have a bunch of GT counters to gain life if I need to. Okay. If this isn't a flying blocker... Oh, it was a flying blocker, so I don't have lethal anymore. But I also can't really lose. Oh, Spellbook Vendor is actually really nice. Spellbook Vendor. Beginning of combat. Uh, um, let's put this on that. I think I do Vigilance again, and then I pay one, and then, oh yeah, there we go, and then I'm going to attack, and I can, I can do 10 here, let's see, bottom, but I think I'll just let the bat token block, he has to block, if he doesn't block, then I, and then I just, I just win, all right, uh, that's fine. And I guess I just pass again. GTA with a million counters on it. I don't really have a reason to, to, to use it right now. And I want the flyer to have the GTA so you can't attack with Dragon's Rage Channeler. All right. Whew, we got there. Battled with uh, another aggro deck, but uh, things worked out. All right, we're 1-0. Best start I've had in the draft in years. <laughs> Not quite, but I do like being 1-0. Let's get to round two. All right, round two, battling Mac on red-green beats. Uh, this time the caverns is supposed to be in the deck, by the way. I am going to keep this hand. Look, I don't love it, but it's got Wandering Emperor. Wasteland is kind of like an interactive card. You know, it's close to a spell. It actually charges up the Lion Sash nicely. Oh, I'm just going to Wasteland that. I don't think getting Lion Sash out first is that necessary, and it's possible that he kept a Triome hand that really was necessary for him to cast his spells. So we'll see. I need to not draw lands. Is he Ancestraling here? No, but I'm just drawing all lands so far. This is going to be a beat if he can kill my Lion Sash. Yeah, he can. And another play would be nice here. Bankbuster, <laughs> are we good? I guess I gotta play this gemstone caverns, so I can uh, get in successfully. Or rather, I'd rather the gemstone caverns die to Armageddon than one of my planes. So I'm gonna play gemstone, and that's gonna be the last land I'm gonna play. You know, Geddon is not the best. Oh, Max got a little bit of blue too, but he played mostly red and green cards against Nachito. So. 
plays for us. Don't play with one drop, please. Ugh. Okay. Mbop, mbop indeed. Draw. Gemstone Caverns past the turn. I mean, depending on what Matt Mac plays here, I might be able to get an actually. Like if he goes land five drop, I can go Emperor minus two on your birds. Oh my god, a Mox is making the getting plan so much worse. Awful. Okay. Well, I was going to say I could kill the bird and then I could maybe path. But I guess I want to path before I get in. Mm, to fairy time. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to play the one on Emperor. And the thing is, I don't actually have to use it yet. So I can use it end of turn and make a token. And then he doesn't get to bounce it quite yet. Okay. And then, I mean, I do get to attack Teferi here. Let's hope Mac doesn't have a good play. Hex Drinker, okay. He's just going to pass because he's got Bank Buster here. All right. Make a Samurai. Oh, Twin Shot Sniper. Oh, Seasoned Engineer is actually really nice. I'm going to have to play my planes because I'm going to need Path as well. I'm going to go Seasoned Dungeoneer. Oh, I guess I could have done it the other way. Whatever. I could have gotten my planes first. Planes. I think I just passed the Hex Drinker. Yeah, because of Teferi, I'm going to have to do it now anyway. I suppose I could have actually just offered the trade, but this seems fine. Path to Exile Armageddon. That is kind of a Mondo combo. Attack Teferi. All right. Well, if you want to kill Teferi, or rather lose to fairy you can kill my samurai i'm kind of hoping that doesn't happen mac does only have two cards in hand he's got to have a lot of plays here that mox was was unfortunate but okay he killed the samurai i mean if he doesn't play something that can beat seasoned engineer then i don't mind it okay play a land they haven't seen geddon don't be a way to kill seasoned engineer please and there's not that much that does oh once upon a time using man on that is great Hit Volcanic Island, sure. Play the Volcanic. I like all of this. No, I don't like that. Tribal Flames. Urgh. All right, well, let's scry here. Lost well. Well, well, well. Bottom, I'm bottom. Okay, draw a creature. Yeah, that's a creature. All right. I could get in. I'm just going to get in here because I can play Blade Splicer next turn. I don't like getting with birds in play all that much and mocks, but I think given the circumstances, I just go get in, then I go stash, play my blade splicer. Here's the plan. This looks like a fourth year lingus for one, stealing the initiative. Mm, had a haster. Well, if I didn't get in, I was really dead to fourth year lingus. <laughs> uh, I'm still dead though, to be clear. <laughs> I, I, I can't win. I mean, he had a haster the turn after I get in, which, to be fair, he had a bird and a mox, and I just did say that those were going to get me good. I'm actually going to side out Geddon in Gemstone Caverns, just to be clear, <laughs> because I don't think Geddon looks very good here. Yeah, draw your card. And... I guess I'll cast Get Lost on that. I'm going to have to kill it at some point, and I'm really just assuming that my next turn is going to have to be casting Blade Splicer to even have a prayer here, though I don't feel like I do. Delighted Halfling, use the map token, revealing a Knight of Autumn. Hmm, is he going to keep that? It's pretty good against Blade Splicer if he does. He draws. All right, we're done. Okay, so Gemstone Caverns out, Plains in. Sir Ginger I actually like against Teferi a good amount. Lion Sash didn't seem particularly exciting. Don't think I want Batter Skull, Agatha Soul Cauldron. I mean, I don't hate Lingering Souls in this kind of matchup, but I don't. I guess I could put in Lingering Souls and put in like two swamps. 
I did take the gemstone caverns out. I guess that does help. And then at that point, the chromatic star gets a little bit more interesting. And it's good with Sir Ginger. Thalia? Thalia seems fine. Not exciting. No, I don't like this. I'm not going to play the Lingering Souls. I'm going to play... Oh, I guess I don't even have to take anything out. I just took out Lion Sash and Geddon for Sir Ginger. Oh, I could take out the Chromatic Star. I don't need that. That's the card. And then I want to bring in Brave the Elements. He's got a lot of removal. I can see Brave being good. All right, I'm on the play here. Let's see if I can get some action going. Sure. I'm going to save the Bobble because... I mean, I'll play it, but I don't need to use it yet because I've got Scholar. And I'm going to play Scholar on two here. Okay, because it gives me a little shuffle if I need it. Scholar's nice. Let's pass the turn. If he kills the Scholar, I'm just cracking the bauble here. All right, Mox. I don't like that. Though I wouldn't hate it if he played Teferi. Yeah, he's going to kill my thing. And play Sylvan Library. All right, yeah, Thari's on top. Yeah. Let's just get Palantir going. He can't Othari yet. I have Path for it. Uh, actually, I'll guarantee a Wasteland, sure. He's going to mill planes. I'm going to get Wasteland, and then I can go... Depending on what he does next turn, I could play Wasteland plus Thalia, but I might just play Wasteland plus Sir Ginger. It depends, it depends. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And Noble Hierarch. Oh, well, in that case, I'm just going to go Sir Ginger here past the turn. I mean, I could play Thali, I guess. Maybe Thali would have been better. Keep a two mana path up. Seven cards in his hand. I guess he has to put two back from the Sylvan, but. Sylvan's been a three for one. Knight of Autumn's a two for one. Yeah, I, I am just outclassed here. He's just got like one mana removal. He's got mocks. He's got one drops. He's just a lot faster than me. He's killing all my stuff. Like he killed my call, Scholar, killed my Palantir. I do actually think I should have played Thalia, but the problem with playing Thalia, no, no, I like Sir Ginger, is I can't play an equipped Jite if I play Thalia. I think it's fine to do that. All right, is this going to be... Thari. Hmm. I guess we'll find out. It seemed like using Wasteland wasn't very relevant. I also don't think I can side out artifacts against him, even though he has Knight of Autumn. Like, I just have a ton of them. I just kind of have to hope it doesn't line up that way. Are you not playing Othari? I really would be unhappy if that was the case. Undermountain Adventurer. Jeez. Okay. So now I can pass the Undermount Adventure, but I kind of have to pass the Othari and a bird. <laughs> yeah. And a halfling. Yeah, sure. Why not? Draw. Gta. Equip. Get in there. Wow. If you block with Adventure, I can finish it off with the GTA. If you block with the either, I guess you block with Knight of Autumn. And I could kill the birds and the noble. Yeah, I think I actually do. Because Thalia is good at wearing GTA regardless, so I think taking out his two mana dorks is good. And then I can Path Othari, take five off Underman Adventure. And. I don't know, hope to draw a combination of other cards. I, I really can't win this game. It, the problem is my path's kind of already spoken for, and he's getting to Sylvan every turn. The, the fact that he got to go turn two, Unholy Heat, your thing, plus Sylvan. Oh, this is just a giant fourth Eorlingus. All right. And we're done. Let's see if we can get round three. If I go 2-1 with this deck, I'll be really happy. Alrighty, time for round three. Playing against Dan, who's playing like Breach, LED... Echovians, uh, Michel's Workshop, Golos, Displacer Kitten. Basically what I'm saying is it's hopefully Thalia Clock. I actually am going to keep this still on the strength of Esper Sentinel. And because, ugh, 
never mind, I'm dead. Uh, <laughs> and because Dan has shielded, though, if Dan doesn't actually play too much stuff here, am I getting turn one? Does he have like a crucible or something? No. I am going to... I'm going to portable hold a fast bond. The reason I'm portable holding fast bond here is if he plays a draw seven, I don't want that to go nuts. And I think of the fast bond Zern or pairing, the fast bonds are the strongest part. So portable hold could, could be saving my bacon here. We'll see what is. I'm going to start a set a stop on upkeep because he also has shield in his deck. And it could be what's getting cast here. The one ring? Ugh. Never mind, I am dead. All right. Oh, Metamorph One Ring, that's that's something. It's not nothing. The problem is my deck's a lot less well-suited to have the, the One Ring in play than his, but I guess I'm glad I killed the Fast Bond at least. Turn two, Run Ring's hard to beat. Dan is 0-2, and honestly, I don't think his deck's that functional from what I've seen. I've watched his other matches, but a turn two One Ring will still likely be enough this game. I just have to hope that's not what happens other games. Mm. You know what? I'm not going to path the tracker. I'm going to play my own one ring here. I don't think I want to path tracker because I really want to kill Shieldred. I also uh, don't think that clues are very good right now. He can tap the one ring to draw three cards. Like, is he spending time using clues? I, I don't think so. So. I feel like uh, saving the path to exile is going to be a, a better maneuver. It's just it's just hard to imagine cracking clues being a big part of this. I need Armageddon is what I need. What is this? Coveted Jewel. Okay, that... That's a wild play to make. Okay. If you don't win this turn... The odds that my... Esp I mean, if he has a removal spell, that's that's fine. But like... The odds that Esper Sentinel can get in here just seems reasonably high. Is he banking on me not having a removal spell? <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, no, okay, that that totally makes sense. All right, well, I, I mean, look, I'm going to lose this game. That's fine. But I'm hoping that uh, I can do some good thalia -ing the next game. Yeah, time lock does, totally makes sense. That play, good. Is this Shieldred? I'm going to draw in response if, if it is. Mm -hmm. And, all right. I mean, get lost isn't bad. He gets to draw four and gain eight. All right, what do we got? Time warp. I'm going to do it again. No, Displacer Kitten. Oh, for Coveted Jewel. All right, all right. And a mox. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's one way to use a mox and a time walk to draft combo and all that. Uh, I don't want Bizarre of Baghdad. I mean, like Lion Sash might actually be okay. Definitely like Armageddon, March, Path, all that stuff is fine. The question is, what do I want? Do I want Agatha's Soul Cauldron? Sir Ginger, I think Wasteland's good. Gemstone Caverns is coming out. I mm, don't think a Taxian Probe does too much for me. Is there any chance I want to like try to speed up a little and play like Mox Opal plus some artifacts? He has Underworld Breach, so I guess I have to put the Cauldron in. It seems hard to get around that. Given that I'm doing that, I mean, Luris is just not that good in this sort of matchup. But I don't know that I really want Mox Opal either. Maybe Wandering Emperor. Oh, Sarah Paragon's a little worse. All right, let's maybe take out Sarah Paragon, put in Mox Opal and Sir Ginger, and take out one land. Oh, no, I can't take out a land. I already took out Gemstone Caverns, and I didn't replace it. So <laughs> it was going to be a land short. Uh, Umazawa's Jite. At least it kills. The, that's a way to kill Displacer Kitten, which I, I do kind of want. The Palantir's okay. Blade Splicer, Flickerus, maybe Ranger Captain. The Ranger Captain turning off spells is good. I don't really want to cut Luris. I'm just not going to play this Mox Opal. And I think I should just probably play another land and just not play the Sir Ginger. All right. I'm on the play here. And let's see if we can assemble something good. Thalia's? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking at that. 
Yeah, I mean, I got to keep this hand. It's supposed to go into five. Yeah, I've got to put back cradle as sad as that is. The problem is, I don't think, uh, I don't think I can, I certainly not put back a land and all these spells like are very good. So let's put back cradle. I'm going to lose if he opens on fast bond twice and which is what it is. I mean, if I draw Thalia right here, you know, that's a different story maybe. Mox isn't anything too crazy when there's a uh, fast bond out. It doesn't really change anything. Mm -hmm. Another turn two one ring here. I'm going to play Ranger Capitan Channel. Look, you know, if you if you have the if you have these cards, like if you if you get the right the right combination of the fast mana, then he certainly can do busted stuff. He's got fast bond and channel going. I assume I just lose here. But we'll we'll see what happens, I suppose. Chrome host seed shark. I didn't draw any of my instants either, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And I was watching Dave's other matches. I can tell you, he did not do this in his other matches. <laughs> All right, is his last card a big spell? It looks like it is. Oh no, what could it be? Six mana, Echo of Eons. Oh, okay, hold on. Now I have a March, which I could do something with. I am going to lose all of my cards at the end of the turn. I mean, so is he, just because of Memory Jar. Mm, Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, I think I think I'm just dead no matter what, but I guess I'll march the... The, the Shark. I don't know, just seems like, I could kill the fast bond, but I don't really think that's gonna help. He's gonna have a lot of mana because he's gonna get to crack lines. I Like I'm getting turn two killed here. Like, yeah, he's not, even a good white weenie deck would have a problem with that, I would say. Much less a mediocre one. Well, do your thing, do your thing. He's sacking some lands. Mm-hmm. And cracking the windswept teeth for an overgrown tomb. Are we casting Shieldred here? It's kind of what it looks like. And then Shieldred into a uh, flashed back echo. Or are we just flashing back echo, not knowing whether what we're going to have? No, this looks like Shieldred. All right, here goes Shieldred. And, I mean, I'm just dead here. I don't think it even matters whether it's a Shieldred or not. I don't really, can't really conceive of a situation where I could win this. All right. All right, well, the comeback trail didn't start yet. Our team's actually doing all right. We're tied right, we're, sorry, we're down like three to five right now. But we, so I'll hope my teammates can win, but that'll do it for today. This, this deck was medium. It was just a white weenie deck with no power and none of the best white cards except for like a seasoned Dungeoneer. The rest of the, and I guess the Thalia. Otherwise, yeah, it wasn't anything impressive. Max deck was much better. Dan just got, you know, picture perfect draws. Again, from a deck that <laughs> was very much not generally doing that. Uh, though maybe he was getting unlucky in the other matches. Who knows? In any case, that'll do it. I will see you tomorrow for another draft. I appreciate you hanging out for the good and the bad, even if uh, we're getting beaten down here and there. That can always change. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.